Hi, Susie Rhodes, your financial training expert with Passmasters. I thought this week I'd make a video for all of you taking the SIE exam. Some helpful tips. What do I think that you should do to ensure that you pass this exam on the first attempt? And yes, I have a course that I'm gonna want you to take, but if you don't do that, there's lots of things you can do to study for the SIE exam. So anyone can take it 18 years of age or older. Its passing score is good for four years. It is the first exam you need to pass to begin your adventure in the securities industry. So if you're still in college, you can take this exam on one of your summers off or Christmas break or something like that. And if you're looking into a new career, you can take this exam, study at home. So what are some really important things over the years that I know you should look at? First, and I'm gonna put links in the video description to all of these references. First is the FINRA website. So FINRA is responsible for writing and administering the Securities Industry Essentials exam. Their website is full of useful information regarding this exam. So let's look at their website. So it has information for you as far as how to enroll, how to schedule on the day of your exam. The SIE, it is an hour and 45 minutes long. It is 75 questions long. Its current cost is $80. We're gonna click on this link here. FINRA's website describes what is going to be on the test. So an introductory level exam assessing the candidate's knowledge of basic securities information, including concepts fundamental to working in the industry, such as types of products and their risks, the structure of the securities industry markets, regulatory agencies and their functions, and prohibited practices. We talked about how long it is, how many questions it is. It's passing score, that's a good thing to know, is a 70%. So 70% is perfect. I know you wanna get 100, it doesn't matter. 70% is all you need to pass. So that's the goal, passing this test. Some really important things are found right here where it says prepare for your exam. I want you to take this practice test. So it is a really good indicator of where you're at. I suggest you take it when you're first beginning your studies. And then I suggest you take it when you're done and see how much you've learned over the course of your studies. It is a really good exam. So 75 questions, multiple choice, similar to those that you might find on the SIE exam. This is not timed. But if you are someone that gets test anxiety, I highly suggest taking it with your timer on your phone, on your watch, wherever, one hour and 45 minutes. And, and know at the test, you can hide the time if it gives you anxiety and you can click it again to make it show again. Sometimes people forget that you can click it again to make it show again, because you do kind of want to pay attention to the time. At the end of this exam, it will give you feedback of what you need to review. So this just disclaimer says these are not the questions you will see on the test, but they're going to be very similar conceptually to what you will see on the test. So take the practice test. I'm not gonna do it in this video. They have frequently asked questions, so you can check those out. So the practice test, super important. The content outline, I wanna look at that with you. So how do I know what to include in my course? I've been training people just like you for my entire life, it feels like. Well, more than half of my life, I've actually been teaching these kinds of classes. So when we put together a course, we use the content outline. So when I put together the SIE course, I followed FINRA's content outline. The last time they have updated it is 2021. So the four sections in the course are going to mirror the four sections that are in this content outline. So section one, knowledge of capital markets is 16% of your exam, it's 12 questions. Understanding products and their risks, 44%, 33 questions. 
Section three, understanding trading customer accounts and prohibited activities, 31% of the exam, 23 questions. Four, overview of the regulatory framework, 9% of the test, seven questions. So it tells you what federal laws you have to know for this exam, which of course are included within the course, the Securities Act of 1933, the Paper Act, the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, the People Act, the Investment Company Act of 1940, which really regulates pooled investments, the Investment Advisors Act of 1940. So all of these are covered within the course. You have to know federal securities laws, of course. So it's a very broad exam. There is so much that they're going to expect you to know for 75 questions. The SIE is the first exam you take, and then you're going to take a top off. So whether or not you're taking your Series 6, your variable products license exam, or you're taking your Series 7, which is your stockbroker's exam, you both have to take the SIE. So it is got a lot of information on it. It is very broad. So I'm not going to go through every single thing here, but I do want you to look at it. I want you to look at the content outline and I want you to go, oh, NASA? I don't know what NASA is. The Federal Reserve? Who are they? And use it as something to test your knowledge. So if you don't have something to say about every single one of these topics, then you need to go back into whatever course you're studying and find that topic. So in the past master's course, this content outline matches the sections within the course. So like I said, lots of things are covered in the content outline. And then it gives you the actual rules. So when I'm, I'm trying to figure out what to teach you, I actually look up FINRA rule 2266, civic information. And I make sure to cover that within the course. Section two, understanding products and their risks, the largest part of the exam. It has a lot of information. So we have equity securities, we have debt instruments, we also have options, packaged products, direct participation programs. Oh, I skipped municipal fund securities, 5T9 plans, REITs hedge funds, exchange traded products, types of investment risks. Oh my gosh, I know I said I wasn't gonna do all this, but maybe I will, we'll see. Lots of FINRA rules. MSRB rules is the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board, CBOE rules, SEC rules and, and regulations, so all covered. All of this you have to know. Section three, understanding trading customer accounts and prohibited activities. So orders and strategies, investment return, trade settlement, corporate actions, types of accounts, customer account registration, anti-money laundering, right? Everything, books and records, privacy, regulation S-P, best interest obligations, suitability, know your customer, prohibited activities, do not engage in market manipulation, types of market manipulation. So Sometimes you can look at this content outline and you can think like somebody writing a question for the test. And you can look at this question or look at this topic. I'm going to make you a question. All of the following are types of market manipulation except market rumors, pump and dump, front running, or insider trading. Which one's not listed as types of market manipulation? Insider trading. I'm not saying you should do insider trading. It's bad. You can get in big job and go to jail. However, when they're writing the content outline and they list types of market manipulation, market rumors, pump and dump, front running, excessive trading, marking the close, marking the open, backing away and free riding, you better know those are all types of market ma manipulation. And then if they make an accept question, who knows what they're going to put in there as the accept. But put in something. Maybe they put in arbitrage. Arbitrage is perfectly legal. It's a price differential. Who knows? Use this content outline. Make sure you understand what they expect you to know. You don't have to look up all these FINRA rules. I did that for you. Overview of the regulatory framework. So registration and continuing education. What do you have to do to complete that? Employee conduct, U4 and U5, reportable events, and then more rules. I guess I did do all of it. 
It is that important. If you look at the content outline and don't know something, then go into your course and learn it. FINRA's website, it's really good. It's full of great information for the SIE exam. What else can you do to study for the SIE? YouTube. You found me on YouTube. So on my YouTube channel, what I want you to go to is this playlists. And then from here, I want you to go to the securities industry essentials practice questions. So the full playlist. So this is almost every single topic that you will find within the past master's course. And there's more than one question. So it's a wonderful place to go to study, to see if you know what you need to know to take and pass this test. So use all of my videos. I also have a test anxiety tips. Uh, it is a playlist full of shorts. <laughs> I look like such a dork. Use those, they're very helpful. I'm also a registered yoga teacher, so I have some ability to give you advice in this area. And then I have a Math Made Easy playlist. So this playlist is really helpful if math gives you anxiety. So it's really, none of these securities exams are math tests, but you will have on the SIE some math. So utilize this playlist to practice some of the math. I also have a vocabulary playlist, which is helpful. What do the words mean? What else can you use to study for the SIE? You're going to go to the pastmasters.com homepage. And I said I did have videos for what the words mean, but there's only a few of those videos. What do the words mean? Go to more, go to flashcards. Whatever course you're studying for, this video is for the SIE. So we're going to go to the SIE. We have free flashcards. So what we've done is we've taken the glossary that's in the course and we've made for you a way for you to study. So you don't have to be a current student to go through these. So they are paginated 100 pages at a time. There's 536 for the SIE. So there's other courses available as well. You can shuffle of these 100 questions. You can shuffle them. So if you do this broker dealer and you don't know what it is, you flip over the card and you can read it. And then if you really didn't know what it was, I highly suggest making an actual index card flashcard for yourself to practice. So flashcards are here for you for free. Also on our homepage is a place to go for free practice exams. You select the SIE and you can take an exam. So it is 36 questions long. There are 36 topics in my SIE course. So that doesn't mean your test is 36 questions long. It's 75 questions long. So some of these topics will have more than one question on the real test. So these are things that I highly suggest that you utilize to study for your SIE exam. Now, of course, I want you to be a student. I want to help you pass this test. Our course is a 90 day access period. You have videos, over 15 hours of lecture videos. They're all me. You have practice exam questions, over 1500 practice exam questions. You can track your progress and you can always ask any questions. I have a very small team. I am a small business, but we are there to help you with anything you need throughout this time. The SIE is a hard exam. It's very broad. I think that's the hardest part about it is that you have to know a lot for one question on a topic, but you can do it. I am here to help. If you'd like to check out past master's course offerings, there is a link in this video's description. If you have any questions about this video at all, just reach out in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and turn those notifications on so that you'll know when I do my next video. Happy studies. You got this.